beep, 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 A Radio Stat Zero broadcast. Oh boy, this is one of those unceremonious hundredth streams. A lot of people like to make big deals out of these things, but not me. Not me. I'm just I'm just here to draw. So uh, for those of you on replay, those of you who are lurking, those of you uh, around, uh, as you can see that this is uh, tonight's prompt is Bloom, suggested by Piper. So what I did is before the show, because I'm actually got a couple things to talk about. Before the show, I um, I did a quick quick sketch layout thing so that I could kind of concentrate on repenciling it as I talk. It's been an interesting week. Um, from, well, hey, Eric Guapo, welcome, welcome, welcome to the nest. Um, prove what? I got nothing to prove. <laughs> in, front, in front of you guys for a whole ton of shows now. Y'all know what I do. Uh, but it's been an interesting week uh, that I've noticed in terms of being away. You know, like when you're away, when you're away, you notice things. When you're when you're on the outside looking in, you you tend to notice stuff. And it turns out that this was a very eventful week in terms of people fighting and or uh, just crazy events that uh, that have befallen us. And it's got me thinking. It got me thinking about a lot about the show. So much show, so to come back one extra, you know, like a day early. Um, the first thing that I noticed over Twitter was there's this thing going on about like, you know, the creators, the bigger creators, they need to help the little guys. They have to. This struck me as weird because I would think as a creator you'd want to make it on your steam and on your fans you know like the people that support you not so much somebody you know like like saying hey go check out this book and then having their supporters some of which that will do just whatever to to make them happy go and check out the book just so they can say like yeah i, I went and did it yeah look at me i did it um i would so much rather personally put in a bunch of work over you know a course of a few years and find people that just like like my stuff you know like that aren't really going anywhere um that that you know buy it because or or, or rather will sit and watch because they love it and it just to me listening and watching people that that say you know the bigger guys need to help out the little guys it seems it seems weird to me to me personally i mean i always said like you know those uh those streams where you know you get a bigger account that that goes on and um, promotes a bunch of the 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 uh accounts or maybe creators that aren't as well known i never really wanted to go on into any of those i felt like it was hostile you know what i mean like unless it was like one person for an hour sitting there talking to you know like a creator or whatever like that i always felt like it was like a you know get on oh, what's your book what's it about where's the trailer uh, okay yep okay great thanks shovel it out and go but that to me doesn't seem like promotion i mean that's you get on a bigger platform but you know that doesn't seem helpful to me i i think you know i suppose somebody somebody's gonna say like it's an opportunity uh, you know, it's more exposure, but at the same time, most of those, most of those, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, fans have said creator there for that creator, not, 
not for you. They're there because that creator is putting on a show. Um, and so I would think, and this would be, you know, my way to go. It, it would be, you know, just working until I have enough people that like what it is I do, you know, which, you know, that could take years, but that's, that's kind of how it is. Like all these overnight successes, they, uh, they tend to have been struggling for years and years <laughs> before they actually were, were found, um, by an audience. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. The whole, like, um, you need to help. Cause I wouldn't want the help. I mean, of course it's appreciated if they decide, but I mean, it's, it's a totally different thing. If the creator likes what you do, citizen Rona, welcome to the nest. Long time. No see guys. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 I think a different, different if the creator in question likes what you do. And they want to promote you because they are a fan of your work. That is, I think, different than, you know, just like, all right, you can come on my show. Oh, geez. Um, and I wouldn't want to be in that position. You know, I, I wouldn't want to be in that, that position of, I suppose, which is probably why more people might make it than me. But, you know, I, I don't think that I would want to be in that position of, um, of, uh, having a show or I mean a channel with like say a million subs but only having 26 at a time watching because it's like and maybe like 300 views because a lot of people either signed up because maybe they know who you are but they don't really watch you or or uh, somebody told them to sign up and they just did it uh, you know I wouldn't I wouldn't really want to be in that position as a creative person, right? But I, I guess, you know, not everybody's the same. Not everybody's. So I saw that, that going all over as Vanessa would say, X going to give it to you. And it got me, it got me thinking like during my break, one thing that I, uh, that I, one reason I took this break. Yeah. I don't get the whole, you owe me help attitude says Ronan says, and it seems to happen more and more and more. Um, but, uh, but over, you know, when I got sick, I, I was, you know, I had like a, a cold or a flu or whatever a few days. I wasn't online very much. And when I got back on, um, I, I just, I'm sitting here asking like, you know, members of the chat, different people, like, when did this happen? What's going on here? What, who is, who's this? Why are they fighting? You know, I wasn't online to keep track. I wasn't online to, uh, to, to see it happen. So I had no clue. So I says to myself, I says, self, maybe you need to take a little break and, you know, from streaming and stuff and just listen, just watch and pay attention, see what's going on. And I thought I run this experiment of like, like, um, you know, what, what would it, would it be like if I were just kind of like open my mind back up and in you know, like kind of blank slate, forgot what I know. And watch this as an outsider looking in, like somebody like just discovering all of this stuff, sort of 2020 uh, stat, going into different streams. Um, Eric Guapo says, I wonder if it's jealousy. I think some of that, You're, I think you're right. In some cases, I think some creators feel like they've been busting their butt for a long time, but you know, maybe it's just like their art style's not quite there, or uh, maybe they're just not, you know, very good at streaming or a super likable person. I don't know what it is, but yeah, people get so angry when maybe it's embarrassment over rejection. You know, sometimes when you're uh, when you're alone most of your time, and you just you uh, you don't have a lot of interaction. Like sometimes that kind of thing can can be volatile. To be honest, I think comics are full of those type of people that, you know, they, they don't hang out with a lot of people. They sit and read books because, you know, that's maybe they, they, they aren't very good socially. Um, I, I don't know, but I, I go on there and I'm watching stuff. And the first thing I see, this is going to be one of those streams, the very few streams that I do, where I'm going to talk a little bit about drama, not so much in a, a taking sides type of way. Because I didn't have a whole 
whole lot of um, opinion about the actual fight. But just as a person looking in, so I see this Eric, July, and Ethan, something goes wrong. I'm not 100% sure where it is. I, I, I hear it's like a week or two ago that they were starting to fight. Um, somewhere around the uh, when that young Clippa <laughs> saved the drama for your mama. Yeah. No, I want I want to look at this in like a more of an ana analytical kind of thing. So this young Clippa goes and he does that thing where he puts money on the warehouse. It says like, ignore these super chats, you know. And July gets up in arms about that. He says, it's not safe. I got people that work for me and, and whatnot. Um, and I, from what I understand, Ethan didn't think much of it. He, he you know, he kind of laughed it off a little bit and July didn't like that. And from what I understand, they, they kind of spoke and they got on to uh, a flash cast. I'm trying to work this out as I'm, I'm talking to you guys. They got on a flash cast and I guess they had a little argument, disagreement. And... Eric sends a DM a while ago, a week ago, to Ethan telling him, you know, like, hey, uh, um, you know, I don't sit and get mad at people or dismiss people I'm cool with. and but so, so Ethan takes that as a threat uh, and he releases the DM and he and this young clip will make this this uh, joke video, right? Um kind of making light of the whole Eric July situation. And then what you have now is fan bases kind of attacking each other. And, and Eric July's fan base is, and Ethan's too, they're pretty dedicated. They're very, very uh, loyal. Some cases, almost rivaling from what I saw, almost rivaling like Snyder versus bros. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they will attack. Um, so now you've got you know people people uh, going after Eric July fans. You got you got people going after Ethan, and for what? This is this is one of the things that I, I was really thinking about during my break. Is is um, yeah, there are diehards on both sides. Eric says. So this is what I'm thinking about on my break. So when I came into Comicsgate, when I found it. I, I started with Mandy Summers back when uh, when she had like five or six people in her chats. Her and Peter Gilmore and Wyatt. They had like just maybe five to 12 people. This is a good start. I didn't really know who any of these people were. I just saw people that were talking about comic books. And there was more talk about comic books back in 2020 than there was, you know, there is now. Uh, and they they were having a good time. So I was like, oh, great. You know, people that talk about comic books. Great. I, that's awesome. Uh, hey, A-Line. Welcome, welcome to the nest. So uh, I find these people and I branch out from there. I find CGUK. I find, I find you know, all man. I, I think at the time graded 0.5. Um, and then the professionals and, you know, kind of splintered out from there. Ah, A-Line says this whole situation is complete, completely moronic. Yeah, I'm getting to that. Uh this is the part of comics I don't like, what Eric the Quapo says. So I sit and listen to Ethan and them talking about how they're going to change comics, they're going to save comics, um, which is sort of, sort of, in so many words, the same kind of kind of pitch Eric used. You know, we want to we want to bring this stuff back. We want to pay people more. Something Ethan also said. We want to, uh, you know make comics that that uh kind of more reflective of the older times um and and uh at the time you know ethan was talking about the um hot dog salesman thing which i never liked i was just like that's a food thing cartoonists and artists are artists you know you just you don't have to respond to everybody you can pick your battles and you really don't have to most of the artists that we love we we never knew them we never knew their personalities we never knew uh you know their likes their dislikes their political aspirate and none of it and we were a-okay with them i mean we all just kind of built a idea of who they were in our heads just based on the work that they have or some people just didn't they just really liked their work you know and uh so now we get to a point where ethan gets bigger right and he starts getting attacked 
And then people turn on him from the inside and, you know, like he, he, he reciprocates and stuff like that. And that causes, you know, rifts and divides and people walking, you know, walking away and, you know, going to different places. And now you got Eric July saying kind of the same thing. And now you got him and Ethan, two of the bigger brands that should be, that should be like almost uniting and making more love for comics. And they're fighting. It's crabs in a bucket right now. It's, it, to an outside person, from what I've seen, it is crabs in a bucket. Um, A-Line says, I don't know why, but it's the same with late books too. It seems like the artists are, are used to drawing fast in corporate environments and give timelines based on it. And people are up in arms about it. Less, A-Line says, uh, for those who came in from the outside industry. Eric Grappo says, Ethan is not a legitimate competitor in comics. He does not publish regularly enough to compete. Well, uh, we're, we're, I'm looking at hindsight here, and, and and then you know now what I'm what I'm kind of looking at now. So I get in, and then and then in addition to the the uh, line says something something stop using the friend enemy distinction inside and apply it outside. Right. So I, I see the um, what did I see the other day? Uh, the Patrick Thomas Parnell. So you got John, um, you know John. Um, Crap, now, now I can't even remember his name. John is EFAPing um, PTP. Okay, so he does that for like two hours. PTP's talking to Mo Big and someone that buys a lot of art, or did buy a lot of art. Early. Anyways, then it gets real surreal because Ethan starts EFAPing John, EFAPing uh, PTP. And then John comes on and he starts EFAPing with Ethan, John, EFAPing ETE. To me, this is a slow news day. Um, but it also, you know, it, it just seems like there isn't enough, as much talk about comics more, more so than artists and comic business. And let's see here. Um, Eric says, Eric, Ethan loves burning bridges. He did this with geeks and gamers not long ago. I remember the zeros comment stuff. Uh, when I came in, the high council thing was already kind of gone with him uh was it the the guy from uh world class bs bullshitters uh and and jeremy right citizen rona says it makes me wonder if politics was the only reason ethan was booted from the mainstream he sure loves drama and attention not so much books on time um and eric agrees well see the thing is i knew he was a slower artist you, you can't not be with the detail he puts in um i don't know it, how he was in the mainstream i have no clue i'm not really going to speculate on it i do know that he he did you know it matches up with what he said that you know like he does he did mini series he did things like that and he needed a long lead time like three issues worth before the thing is even announced jim lee is very similar like with hush i think he probably had three or four in the can before you know when they started running it so you know slow artists exist heck um that's that's not something i'm gonna i'm gonna knock him for but um so yeah we got we got him fighting with ptp we got him fighting with uh, eric and the chat at the time again looking in looking in it, it was like it was like a lynch mob they were so dang angry and you know like ah screw him kick him you know like this like that looking in this is chaos to me nobody is talking about comics they you know the love of comics anything they're they're just saying this person sucks uh, you know i'm taking the wrench away blah 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 blah, this kind of thing so when i came in the first time i came in right um it was uh it was like it was a very distrusting time it was when doug and mike were on their way out they were fighting they're on their way out i didn't know who these people were it didn't mean anything to me i just thought this was a little hiccup little did i know this is the kind of thing that was going to pop up and down for the next three years okay and I know a little bit about the comic book industry, like the, the behind the scenes parts of it. And uh, it, it's true. I mean, even ever since the newspaper syndicates in the 30s, there have been people screwing each other over and like like publishers taking advantage of artists. That is not new. Now, the problem is when you get off to yourself and you know how it is, and you can maybe possibly like uh, avoid those pitfalls. You find all kinds of new ones. Right. So Eric Guapo says, uh, Ethan oftentimes sides with the very deplorable people. 
he did this type of trolling with War Campaign back in 2018-2019. See, I came in at the near the end of 2019. I think War Campaign was still a thing. I want to say what they got booted or went their separate ways. 2000, 2000, I mean, 2000, uh, late 20 or late 21. I don't remember when exactly, uh, Anna's sister passed away, but that was like the, the crutch or the, the crux. Uh, a line says EBS has to cut some of the deal, some of the deal to get the book out on time. Or yeah, maybe, uh, the guap, uh, the guapo thinks he needs an editor. A-Line says, uh, they all need to take a break from the group of CG and check out what Kelly, Sue, and them are doing. Really? Hey, j -Bot, welcome to the nest. Hello, hello, hello. Um, <laughs> hey, Stat, welcome. Hey, chat. Well, that rhyme. But, uh, so this is the first, you know, I, I, I look at a stream that's going. And, the, you know, two, two Ethan streams, two different fights, Right? As an outsider, I don't know what to think if I'm if I'm just looking in on this. It's not about comics, so I mean I'm I'm clearly not getting any of that. There's no there's no expansion of readership whatsoever, as far as I'm concerned. If I'm just looking in, because I'm I, you guys know me, I'm not a troll type person. I don't I'm not drawn to that kind of thing. If I see a lot of that, I tend to check out. I like having conversations. I like talking to people about you know passions and things it's 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 engaging troll stuff seems unproductive to me it seems like a huge waste of time um and uh and this is <clears throat> excuse me jbot says i missed all this stuff i got in the cg around for october 2021 not a bad time uh that's when i got that's what got me pumped uh citizen ronan says all this stuff is highly embarrassing because these people are supposed to be the de facto leaders of the movement well that's the thing well see as far as i'm concerned the people that i kind of tend to follow are the the ones that really love comics you can tell um take for example like kelsey kelsey is to me one of the the best examples of, of you know like a, a pro that truly loves comics he loves talking about comics. He talks a lot about comics. He and Richard Friend are just on there, like, dissecting it like science. Uh, you know, they get into, like, the European stuff, manga stuff, all kinds of different things. Uh, old 70s and 80s, you know, stuff, cartoon strips. Th that knowledge and that, uh, you know, having an opinion on that stuff and learning from it, that's encouraging to me. I love that. And, and when he talks, it's infectious. Comics... For, you know, from Kelsey, when when he's talking about making comics or whatever like that, you know, you can tell this is this is a man that absolutely loves his comics, uh, and I, I love that. Um, and and then it wasn't you know my time wasn't all bad or 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 chaotic really. I looked in on um, I looked in on uh, you know another uh, Ken Roquefort's another really really good. Uh, example of all this uh i don't think i've ever seen a bad interaction from Rocafort ever like when someone says you know like hey i i got you the book or whatever like that he, he's in there saying thank you somebody draws his character he's in there saying i love it it's it's great thank you you know i've never ever seen i hardly seen him on stream but i've never i've never seen a bad interaction from him that's like <clears throat> peak what people are wanting right and, and I don't think I've seen too many from uh, Kelsey. The only times I've seen Kelsey like negative is when he gets frustrated when people are are talking so much about corporate corporate stuff. Like you know, it's like you don't like it, stop talking about it. Talk about something really great, and then he gets angry, you know, at the people that that want to talk about this stuff because you know that's what people want to hear. They want to hear you slag off Star Wars or whatever like that. You know, it, it gets views, it gets minutes. And uh, and I can tell he gets he gets tired of that, which is I think why he's on Greybeards and they have a great time talking about stuff that they love and joking, and it's it's a it's a good place for him to be. I agree. Uh, a line says, "Oh, here we go." Assistant Rona says, "All this stuff is highly embarrassing because the oh I, I read that support uh, reassurance or yeah." I have to suppose don't feel backed up in your position. The drama happens like it's always going to happen. You got to you have to accept that 
this is just going to it's the way of the land um is it, this is embarrassing he says uh jbot says kelsey fraga aaron are the channels i watch the most talking shop is what i'm here for Rini's pretty good too and i'll get to her in a second um Cicerone says Graham was asked about this on one of his monster streams, I think by Stippling Von, and he said the stuff needs to stop. People need to focus on their books. I agree. Graham, excuse me, Graham and uh, the rest of the professionals are another like beacon. As far as, you know, like the pros go, they are, it's great to see them sit and talk about old comics and their memories and comics and stuff like that, or, or how they do things. Um, that's, uh, that is, I think, I think something that, that helps, you know, like you don't see, I don't see, uh, like Aaron, Andy, Graham, Billy, uh, Art, Dan, any of those guys, I don't see them online fighting with people. I don't, you know, you might see, I see them liking stuff from people. I see them liking, you know, like when someone says like, you know, I just got this book and I'm in love with it. They'll love it. They might comment or, you know, if they're tagged or whatever like that, I don't see them fighting with people. I haven't and i it's it's an example it's a good example um yeah so i mean so i watched a little of that i watched a rini show it was one of those um oh man what i can't remember the name of the show it's the first time i've watched it i've heard about it and i've never caught it live but i i just decided to watch a replay of, it has, has like her and uh phil diaz the hyper wizard um narwhal they all sit and they talk like really have a discussion about the ins and outs of comics like story art things like that um it was a really engaging talk i had a great time listening to that story ah yep creative block thank you Alan. creative block was a really good show or at least the one that i watched um i i really There we go. Uh, at the same time, EVS. Uh, oh, we got we got the audio back. Yeah, my, my internet skipped a little bit. Am I back? I should be back. Okay, I'll have to repeat that again. Uh, Creative Block was a great time. The, the the bit that I watched of it, um, they were really they were really talking comic stuff. It was engaging to someone like me. I understand that it's not for everybody, but in, in terms of for me, I was I was hooked. Uh, Jbot says it's. Uh, at the same time, EVS will chat with smaller creators. Sometimes his love for art and indie shows. That's Ethan. I remember in old videos, you know, okay. Back. Yeah. It's, it's a funny thing, you know, like the, the character that is Ethan or John, John's another one that really does it. Shane. I mean, you can, <laughs> Shane's character is a little bit more, uh, it, you know, you understand that they're characters, you know, like sometimes with, with Ethan or John, I, I find that, you don't know where the reality is where the lines blur you know um but when they get onto other people's channels right a lot of times they're polite they talk comics it's not a bad time um alan says stories in general it could be said since we covered a lot of things you do in writing too yeah um but uh but I did, I did watch that, and I had a good time. If I were a com person looking for comics, like like comic talk or whatever, that wouldn't be a bad show to look at. Um, professionals, when they're talking about, you know, like what's your favorite this comic or what was your first this comic memory or something, it's a great time. Uh, when you see like, um, you know, I almost, I, I almost, it reminds me a little bit of uh, like you know the the uh, Inklings or, or whatever or the um, J JRR Tolkien and C S Lewis and a couple others. They just sat around at a pub and they they just sat and talked about story ideas, criticized each other. Oh yeah, I like that. I don't like that. You know that that's sort of what that gave me, like that impression, and I like that. Um, but 
the thing that worries me the most is you get people that kind of get bigger and they get to a certain level and then it's pretty much just about defending themselves they don't really you know they don't really do what they did to get to where they were they start you know it's it becomes a lot more about defending your business or getting more money or or uh it's it's not the same they go through an evolution and kind of change i suppose we all we can't stay the same forever but um you know also the character yeah sometimes with some of these youtubers the character does take over i uh i don't know ethan made a comment when he was talking about ripa with that that dm that i never i never thought should be released myself i don't like i don't like that that private stuff brought out to public i know some people do love it i don't i i think that one thing that we are missing in this in this area is trust both trust in uh you know artists trusting each other and backers trusting the artist and i think that kind of those kind of stunts absolutely hurt trust um but he said he said something during that that stream a little bit that i watched he said something like you know eric eric said i don't treat anybody the same you know and he i don't know if this was a joke this was part of his character or not he said he should treat me different i was in the comic book industry for 30 years and and you know like i won an eisner i i personally don't think that that means as much here in the indie section i mean you know like it was great work that he did i'm not saying that but i mean like after so long i feel like you you begin to resemble the uh the guy that's sitting in a bar at like two in the afternoon he's got his old beat up letter jacket on and he's talking about how he scored the winning touchdown of the big game in high school you know coasting on that still you know, 20 years later or whatever it is um it's it's about now it's about releasing now making new comics uh <laughs> al bundy yeah uh but it, i i think that those those achievements while great you, sh you can't rest on them you can't um because there's always going to be somebody with a, with a new book that might just be better than yours you gotta be hungry you know even if you you make a million dollars you gotta stay hungry you know, you gotta you gotta stay in that situation where, even on YouTube, where you are, I think, you know, like almost like a new YouTuber excitement, uh, a new artist excitement. If you've got guys that are, are you know, are going away, uh, away because they're having a hard time, you know, like keeping their interest in something that they've loved as long as comics, you've got a problem. You've got a huge problem. This should the 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 enthusiasm should be getting bigger. It should be not only for the creators, but for the fans, you know, and I'm talking another thing that I saw when I was on break on, uh, on Twitter, I'll call it Twitter. I don't care. Um, there was a, gosh, it was like Snuggy Jr. I think he put up something about like, just, it was like a post about almost being disenchanted, uh, about like a lot of different comics out there, but you know, we're kind of hanging on these and stuff. And there were a lot of people that kind of spoke up, like, you know, before they were afraid to, to speak because they didn't want to be ousted, which if that's prevalent in the, the movement anyways, I would say we failed because that was what brought people together anyways, like what, being thrown out for being a, not being able to speak from other places. Okay, comics, welcome to the nest. All the petty infighting, silly arguments, gossiping, and talking behind people's backs with an indie community, quote unquote community, remind me of why corporate structures put uh, are put into place to begin with. <coughs> I think there's some there's some truth to that. I think that the interaction between artists and fans. Now I don't know if all artists wanted to. I'm reminded of this old video of. Um, <laughs> I can't, it couldn't have been Herb Trimpey or I can't remember. Anyways, they were sitting there in the bullpen and they were talking. He's like, yeah, fanatics, fan addicts. Keep them away from me. If they want to read, that's great. Let them read. Just keep them out of my way. 
I'm just going to draw my comics. You know, he didn't really want to <laughs> talk to fans and stuff. Um, but, you know, some other creators really love it, you know, um, if they're not if they're not too shy. Uh, and uh, whoa, we want watercolor. Um, and some some people do. They, they thrive on it. It drives them. But. Um, but. Uh, when you've got when you've got a lot of people and I don't know how small a, a majority or a minority or a majority of this is talking about some of these problems of um, you know like we're not feeling heard um, we're not getting our, our updates in our Instagram area where we paid or Instagram uh, Indiegogo area where we paid you know, I think late books is not a huge problem, right? I think it is the communication aspect because I know a lot of a lot of artists, creators that were late on their books, very late, but p the the backers were okay because they were kept in the loop. The way I see it, and the way I've seen it uh, since this kind of popped off, was this not really so much a um. It's not so much a fight to sell books and to save comics. It's a fight for relevancy. Who's the most relevant, right? That's why people get angry. You know, they might still be kind of making their money, but they're not in the spotlight. And that means their their uh, algorithm chances are going down. Um, that's what I'm seeing, okay? This could, ch this could change with new information. But as of right now, and that's another thing. You know, you talk about Rini. You talk about Phil Diaz. You talk about... Uh, the CGUK creators, you talk about, uh, like, you know, 6am creator, you know, 6am comics. Um, you talk about Andy, you talk about Ken Roquefort. None of these people are out there fighting. None of these people are out there drawing lines in the sand. As a matter of fact, not all of them, but quite a few of them have supported Kickstarters. Like, like, uh, you know, the, the Kickstarting thing, there's some actually some decent looking comics over at Kickstarter by some people that are CG friendly or, I mean, in, in some cases, kind of CG. Kelly Jones is one of them. He's he's a it's a good dude. He's supported Graham. He's never he's been on like what once at least. Um, but they're they're friends and he doesn't give a crap about the CG stuff. He's happy to talk to people. He's got a book coming out on Kickstarter. What are we supposed to do? What do you do if you're comic skate, comic skate only, whatever like that? You just say, well, screw that creator. I, I thought that the whole point was to support creators that treated fans well. Right? Kelly Jones comes on. <laughs> He's polite. He treats people well. Thanks him for buying his book. Thanks him for supporting. Puts out a really good book and delivers. I, I'm Right now, I'm struggling to see the difference. Because if it was just about the political discrimination, if that's it, well, Richard Meyer went back and he funded a book. And it was his thing. Indiegogo politically discriminates. YouTube, which we are all on, politically discriminates. Because it's part of Google. And you know what Google does. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering at this point, the point. Okay? Now, I've got a lot of people that I know that they are comic creators or comic fans. Not necessarily CG. I'm not going to treat them any, any different. It's just not going to happen. See, I'm pro comics now at this point. I really am. If if you're a good, you know, like a really decent person, good project, I, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. You don't like, like help me get people excited about comics and help me get creators continue to be ex excited about creating comics because you need both. It only works you know, both ways. You got to have the creators that are excited to make good comics and you got to have fans or people that are excited to buy the books, right? Um, otherwise, it just, it doesn't work. You've got people making stuff for nothing and you've got people that aren't buying stuff. JBot says, late books are fine, bad books are worse. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've, some people, and that's, that's another thing. I've seen Ethan talking about how he's really pushing reviews because I think it's hit him like it has me for a long time. Nobody talks about the books they back. Not nobody. Most people don't. They just say, it looks great. I got it. Thanks. It's in great condition. And that's the last you ever hear about it. Um, does that help push things? Not really. Does it help push sales? Not really. Um, 
so uh, you know that's he's and and rightfully so so you know i mean i think the the word of mouth is the review you know it's that's what when people people are wondering about the book the first thing they're wondering is anybody read it and is it any good right and the fans have to cultivate that the fans have to I, Kenneth Roquefort Scott probably one of the most vocal fan bases of people that have read the book and do talk about the book and he's got and he's got that and he he doesn't you know get on streams and stuff like that I think that's probably part because every time you go on a stream myself included you take a risk you um you take a risk uh, saying something stupid and and alienating people you know and if you're not as available but your art is i think that's that's a more favorable outcome for my art for an artist citizen Rona says these people who are uh courting drama better be careful at or some point they will be left behind no matter how big they are the youtube personality fans are fickle oh boy oh boy do is, is that true I, I just saw this clip i think of nick ricada and again i very oblivious to this stuff but something happened between him and eric july something to do with this dude named Vito over my head but it got it got ricada fired up enough to where he went on and he just he started like with a drink in his hand started talking about just all his frustrations with people dragging him into this stuff um and he did make a point saying like the drama burns bright and it and people love it but it doesn't last long and it hurts you the longer you go on it's terrible and i agree i i think that you know drama can get you a lot of a lot of um watches and it can get you a lot of uh subscriptions because people love soap operas and sometimes sometimes cg reminds me of a soap opera somebody needs to make that kind of a like video with like the young and the restless theme or something like that <laughs> if I just, if I just cg creators that are always fighting <laughs> but um you know i i'm not necessarily drawn to that i am truly more drawn to the creators that um that just ha get really excited about what they're doing you know they get uh they get on streams and they just have a great time talking about comics and that's another point that i'm i'm starting to almost reverse course on right a lot of people <laughs> like sands in the hourglass so go the days of cg <laughs> um i the, here's here's the thing that i was thinking about today about comics now they're always saying jbot says i just caught the clip where he said eric's fans are so stupid they'll draw out a bowl of cereal that was a sick burn i saw that too that was like one of those like it, the, when when he was silent it was awkward as all get out hockey holy cow welcome to the nest good to see you um now i'm starting to reverse my or or the popular opinion about comic shows or comic channels they say <clears throat> they say get something else that you like star wars movies something like that build a channel on that and kind of integrate it with comics you know kind of mention hey i'm doing a comic blah blah blah, blah. The problem is, like, if you have a a show on um, on uh, I don't know off grid living, those are popular, and you you try to integrate with comics, chances are most of that audience isn't going to give a crap. I mean, if you're like, oh yeah, if you're living off grid, um, you can read comics. You know, like maybe not. Hey, Aki says I usually am not able to make it because you stream too early for me. Yeah, I I try to shoot them all over the place. You know, some. Some in the afternoon, usually Mondays and Thursdays are my like afternoons for me, which is probably like two, three, four a.m. for you. Um, and then uh, random times of the week, I try, I try to do these later ones just to say hi to different people. You know, I I, I really try to try to uh, try to spread things out just so I can talk to different people. I love talking to people. Anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, I you know, I think that there needs to be more innovation and in just engaging with people on comic stuffs on comic channels, you know, like, like 
just like the uh, the shows Re and Narwhal talking about comic stuff, fans talking about comics, even stuff like you know non CG stuff like um, what is it? I don't really watch the channel, but the cartoonist kayfabe where they 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 flip through books and they talk about it. That kind of stuff I think needs to be more prevalent to get people used to it, to get people to not to build your your channel on horror movies and then you know try to try to sell some comics off of that i you need comic fans that are passionate about that kind of thing to get other fans talking and to bring more people into the fold look dc and marvel used to do great when they were dc and marvel they were publishing houses comics were first now they would they would do you know obviously merchandise licensing and stuff like that but they did comics and they had a lot of comics out comics were first and they they promoted comics stan lee went all over the place like hey have you read comics ha <laughs> ha they're great you know and that was their main mark comics now once they've been bought by these subsidiaries um they don't you know that's comics are um research and development right um and that's i i think that's horse crap i think that uh Comics should be a forefront. I don't think a channel needs to be built on anything else. And now the fact is comics are real small. It's true. You use the other thing to bait trap people to come in. But that's the problem, isn't it? Like there's not a actual, there's not a ridiculously big, like from the ground up comics audience. It's always built on something else. Just like when you go to, to Marvel and DC. No, this is Warner Brothers and Disney. Right? These are they they're there to serve movies, books. You go into a store, you don't see comics. You see tie-in books, you see figures, you see clothing, you see serial tie-ins, you see uh stuffed animals, you see uh, uh posters to hang in your room, you know, a bubble bath. You don't see comics. Because they got the characters and they put them on everything else. Right? And I think that's that's the biggest problem we're having. Manga does not have that problem. They've got their merchandise, but they are comics through and through. And that shows because that's what they push. And people go crazy for it. I think indie comics need to... It's a longer road. It's a harder road. But I think indie comics really need to... Um, learn something from that you know that's it's a bad i mean it's not a bad take it's a uh it's an unpopular take uh but i think i think it's the right take i think comics need to get back to the forefront comics and art have to get back to the forefront in order for people to give a crap about them again otherwise they're just and even look at here you've got youtube if you are monetized right and you're making a book you're getting a decent amount of super chats that's immediate money for easy work getting on stream and talking compared to a comic book that's easy work um jbot says drama gets the views but it gets unprofessional when you air dirty laundry it's a double-edged sword it's true it's and i think that's the problem that we're in right now jbot says i don't like the kayfabe guys they're anti-cg oh yeah i I've seen maybe two shows of them, but the point is, oh, anyways, he says they flaunt their extreme studios jacket, but never mentioned Dag, Dan Frager gave it to them. That's fair. Um, but I'm talking just about a specifically a comic channel. It doesn't necessarily have to be those guys, but their channel is all about comics. And that is, that is one thing that I, I would encourage if they're, you know, if they're anti CG, let them be over there. Right. And, and that's another thing like anti CG, cg iron age um you know this this is all just these splinterings and stuff isn't going to help comics kind of get bigger and come together these people stay away from each other and they stay you know these these things stay small heck even you you had a moment where you had uh, the ripperverse stuff and then like ethan and a lot of that stuff kind of coming together to you know, help out a little but now they're fracturing again which cat it's crabs in a bucket CG needs well read well reads reviews. I'm glad he's doing them. Yeah, I, I agree too. Reviews are are something that 
I, I think impartial reviews by people that don't give a crap if if a creator doesn't like them or uh or um you know they're not afraid that can only help because that's what fans used to do right they'd, they'd sit and talk about books the goods the bads but i bet if, if if image came around today you'd have the exact same stuff everybody would be cheering them on at first and then they'd start picking their favorites and they'd start you know like when you had the fights between like rob liefeld and todd mcfarlane and you know they started to kind of break up jim lee's doing what he does oh you'd have people saying oh man kick liefeld he sucks his art sucks anyways. Oh, Liefeld. I love Liefeld. Screw Jim Lee. He's trying to screw him all over and get his money. You know, that's it would be the exact same things. The internet would explode with fights in today's day and age if we had an image. Uh, but we remember it with rose-colored glasses, right? A-Line says, this is how the Russian White Army lost the war. Interesting. I suppose history repeats itself in different ways, doesn't it? I, uh... So, yeah, that's that's been a, a large part of my week. It's just looking at looking in at stuff. Oh, it's always a great pleasure to see like Graham or Aaron. Andy's book looks. I love Andy's book looks when he pulls out. You know, he'll do like how-to books or just different comics and stuff and go through them. That's the kind of thing I love seeing. It doesn't get as many views, but I love that kind of thing. And he, I think he's one of the few people doing that. Um. And I tune in for that. Is uh, you got like uh, um, Rob Geronimo. Dr Rob Geronimo does a lot of great uh, draw streams. When Kelsey is doing his show, I think it's firing on all cylinders. It he talks so in depth about comics while he draws. Um, speaking of draws, I need to. Uh, <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Andy Smith. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I, I like I like that. I think that's a, the step in the right direction. But if you've got, by the way, I, I pulled two tonight because I knew I was going to be having some stuff to talk about. This next one, I did not pre pre do this one. We're going to do this one uh, in front of you guys. This next one's disc jockey from Randy Scribner. He suggested this on X. Um, oh, and this one here was uh, was this one here. This was Bloom, just by Piper. So we're gonna we're gonna call that one a lock um okay disc jockey anyways i i think that the division and the fighting and the the friggin open you know showing the dms uh is going to keep us exactly where we are you know indie comics have always been sort of a wild wild west situation um and you'll notice especially from the 80s most of that stuff ain't around anymore these these companies sprung up all over the place um and and they're gone they they were gone by the mid 90s all these after teenage mutant ninja turtles all these companies came came forward with these black and white books and for a little while it was really great a lot of people liked these these things black and white books and you know there was like innovation uh blackthorn publishing uh um what was it uh first man was not first man not oh shoot it's blackthorn innovation eclipse um which chuck dixon started out on if i remember right um mirage that was turtles um well there's just a ton of them a ton of them i used to get get them in old you know like uh Com blind boxes. Okay, comics is the channel that I recommend is Blood Force. I'll have to look into that. It's all comics, zero drama. Half the videos are a dude drawing his comic. The other half are reviews of 90 comics that inspired it. Interesting. You know what else I like? Uh is uh they don't they just started doing stuff again, the strip panel naked, where they, they take very specific comics and kind of theorize and dissect the comics. I find that one really engaging and interesting, but again, that kind of thing is not always for everybody. You know, you've got the you've got the serious, engaging talk ones, and there have to be some that are just really great and fun. I'm talking like, you know, people getting around together and talking about, I don't know, what books they're reading, and and uh, what they think of them, how they feel about them. Maybe just you know, like going over and dissecting a cover like of. of 
<laughs> what they like and don't like about it. Excuse me. Kind of like a hiccough. Um, disc jockey. Okay. But uh, but I don't know. I, I think something needs to be done in terms of in terms of uh, you know like comics themselves. Because coming in as a new person and seeing just everybody fighting, it it people just say, I don't need this. I, mean, I look on the internet. I go on X, and I see all kinds of the Israel-Palestine stuff. I see blood. I see people being beaten in the streets and killed. Um, that's real-world stuff. Comic books are supposed to be some sort of like break from it for a little bit. And I think comics discussion can aid in that, too. You get in there and you just... You just let everything else melt away and talk about, you know, why it is you like you like uh, the Treehouse of Horror Simpsons books or something like that. Or why it is you think Wraith of God is your favorite book that you backed all year or or Groken or, you know, whatever. I think I think that uh, that is needed. You know, and to make it welcoming is, I know it's, it's a, uh, it's a trip. It's hard, especially nowadays in, in like this single voter, uh, world we live in where, you know, you, you just kind of vote on a single thing and you throw people out. Um, which is why I think the more I think about it, the more I think I'm really just becoming pro comics. You know, you comics get, I talk to you. You're not, I'll still, depending on certain aspects, I'll still talk to you. Uh, adjacent, friendly, absolutely. But, um, you know, that's it, it. it's becoming not as much of a factor because there are so many people just trying to destroy it from within and outside. You got to go case by case basis. You can't, you know, it's, it, you can't just, um, you can't just uh, blindly take it now because, you know, there's another thing I never understood about Comicsgate. Right, going from the beginning, uh, well, actually, it was the uh, it was the copyright thing that that got me thinking about this when when Ethan got the copyright. And that's just for making money. Anybody can use it. Anybody can make any kind of behavior they want and call themselves CG, which can have an effect on everybody else, as you've seen, um, depending on who, quote, tweets it. Uh, I, I don't think that it should be tied. These ideals, these morals, um, I don't think they should be tied to a single hashtag. You know, I know that, that I know it's a beacon that brings us all together, but when anybody can take it and do whatever they want with it for better or for worse, I do not think that it's right to put the entire group behind that word. Any word iron age is another one. All right. I'm not, I'm not excluding that iron age. When, when ages are, are named, it's usually when we look back and say what, what it was that was, that was iron age to me while it's going, sounds a lot like a kid in school trying to give himself a nickname. A cool nickname and nobody nobody's really using it francis settle down shut up i'm iron age call me iron age dang it that's who i am you're francis <laughs> michael dj uh welcome i don't think you've been here have you welcome to the nest welcome to the nest he says for me the well is getting so poisoned i can't recommend my friends check it out anymore that's what i'm talking about see this is exactly what i'm saying uh I don't know how long you've been here, but earlier I was talking about how um, how I took a break from streaming and I just sat and listened as I would like a new person finding this stuff. Like, hey, I'm looking for comics and comic people. Let's look at these. <laughs> I, I loved listening to Rini and them. I, I, when Kelsey and Richard Friend are on, uh, I love it. CG UK, they stay out of the drama. Breaking Rad, uh, Professionals. But when you get into some of the bigger guys, it's just um, it's just fighting. And even so, when you get into some of the um, the dirtier, more adult streams, 
uh, it's like, hey, I got this this really great book by this guy. Hey, let's let's see what you know this creator is all about. Oh shoot, he's sitting there looking at dick videos and laughing. Ah, uh, maybe I'll pass on this one for my kid. You know, and I know that that um, not all these books are for kids, and they're not really selling to kids, but many of them are all ages. And I think that you got to be careful. That's all. If you're going to be professional, you maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. The funny thing about this whole thing is, um, you know, if you just adjust your, your follows, it can wipe a lot of it away. The only problem with that is, you know, what you're doing is you're shrinking. You're not, you're not growing. You're shrinking what you're looking at and it's, uh, it's limiting things. Um, which, if you're talking about growth, eh, I, I want to see these people succeed. I really do. It's killing me. But every time I turn on, you know, like a bigger stream and there's a fight happening, it does not give me um, confidence. You know, it doesn't give me confidence in in the future because everybody seems to be everybody seems to be at each other's throats not everybody like i said like when you get like graham andy those guys they're they're freaking professional through and through um aaron of course aaron doesn't say bad things about people even when they're saying crappy things about him he doesn't say that's one of the things i, I love most about him like that dude he just sticks Shelly on him. <laughs> Shelly's great too. <laughs> but um, but I I think part of the problem is doing different things on your channel. When, and people say, I've heard before, like comics are boring. You know, not all of us like comics. We want entertainment. You know, comics are boring. Uh, well, then that's, I mean, that's a, that's a huge problem if you're a comic channel or you're a comic creator. People are saying comics are boring. I want different entertainment. Uh, you know, not everybody is here for comics. Well, it's it's called Comicscape. It's called, you know, Iron Age. Well, I know Iron Age spans to video games and music and whatever else because there's never been more more um, tools to learn or to you know get your stuff out there. And that much is very very true. But. Uh, just like Marvel and DC, pretty much beholden to Disney and Warner Brothers. Sometimes I think CG is pretty much beholden. It's a, it's a backseat to YouTube. Sometimes it, it seems like that, especially when your comics only come out. There's seasons for comics, aren't there? We're still going to start seeing uh, fulfillments here in the next couple of months. And then it'll go dead for another six months. And we'll see another, you know, like little fulfillment period and then nothing. Okay, Comic says, quite frankly, seeing what professionals are up to these days makes me glad to be an amateur. Uh, Citizen Ronan says, if comics are boring, why are you here? You know what? That's, that's, it, it, I think it's like there's culture war stuff in there. And there's also like, there's a lot of uh, channels that run their, run their uh, channels like parties and people love to party. You know, um, and you and you, you do see it. You do see that there's a uh, there's a there's a dis <laughs> excuse me a divide between like the YouTube audience and the book buying reader audience. There is there is there are two separate sets, and I know Shane has talked about on streams like balancing that, satisfying both sides. He doesn't do a too bad a job. But uh, some people don't. I mean, you know, it's it's tough to make that make that leap. You know. Um, but I mean, for me, YouTube is not a hobby. YouTube is how I share my hobby, which is drawing, just talking. You know. 
Michael DJ says, Aaron is a solid guy through and through. I totally agree. But sitting at a table with a gang rubs off on your reputation. Not everyone can take time to sort out who's who. <laughs> yeah, it was. The hard thing about CG is for a new person is it's not accept accessible. People talk about the lore, you know, like knowing who's who and what's what. It's it's really tough to navigate because it's such a tight knit group. You know, you go in there and you say hello as a new person, and you get ignored um, by everyone, including the host, when it's supposed to be such a <clears throat> fan focused thing. You know, I I think it it sends a weird message. Um, not saying that you know, like when you got a thousand people in there, they can check every single person, but um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, I, I've done a lot of thinking this week. A lot of thinking. Um, and not all of it great. There's, I've, I've grown a lot since 2020. In terms of what I've seen, how I process it. You know? Um, come to think of it, I do believe about a month or two when I first started seeing comments. Okay, that's around when War Campaign must have started fighting. If I remember right. And it seemed like World War III. I was like, wow, I just got here and it's all ending? But then it didn't. And then, you know, two weeks, three weeks later, there was something else. There was Liam. There was Micah. There was, there was, uh, you know, somebody else left the, the big group. And, and somebody else got mad, you know, like. It happens every few months. We know this. Citizen Rona says, I try and say hi to everyone I see because I remember what it was like being new. I appreciate you, man. You're a good dude. Um, but I mean, you know, there's there's always places like Bancroft where so many people are really, really friendly. I try to point people towards those areas. I try to be that type of place here. Um, but... Which is why this is a special stream, like talking about this stuff. You guys know me, usually I don't get into current events. But I felt it kind of necessary to talk about this after the week of just kind of watching things. Particularly, particularly at a time when, when things were so, so, you know, like crazy. Um... I wanted to I wanted to talk about this a little bit. Cause when I started it was a fan movement. It was called a fan movement. It was and that including Ethan, it was called a fan movement. And then it got switched over to like an activist movement, right? Slowly. Um and uh my problem with that is activists tend to see people as allies or enemies. You know, you're either with us or you're against us. And I see some people, you know, like CG or nothing kind of thing. Uh, and it worries me. It bugs me. You know, because comics can't grow. Things can't grow. It can't be all CG or nothing. You know, you've got to you've got to have people that are, are CG friendly, CG adjacent. Uh, should be acceptable too. They want to go on Kickstarter because that's where their audience is. That shouldn't be a problem. CG or die, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Cicerona says the whole war of the two cons is beyond ridiculous and that's been going on forever and that's that is kind of well not just that but since Tampa Tampa uh, that's another thing that I found absolutely ridiculous they went and they had a good time supposedly and then everybody got weird when they got back I don't know what happened at that con but everybody got weird when they got back um, and I, I just, I'm not sure I get it. I'm not sure I get it. Some, you know, like, like the, I, know, I know Phil said that's, you know, he made so many great memories there. And that's awesome. Um, that was around the time when uh, the Jack Show thing with Kelsey happened. Um, I And that's that's another thing. Like, like, with Kelsey, he's one of the, I think he's probably, for my money, probably one of the best all-around artists in CG. Cartoony, he's expressive, does great colors. Um, he's he's friendly, and if he's kind of 
if he's getting getting crapped on because what i from what i understand he he wouldn't get all mad at ptp because they're friends or something he said he had a nice time even at that crazy dungeon um okay but then it all kind of went south with the jack show stuff and now he you know he's off but what, one thing i'll say about kelsey is what the guy does is he he goes away to do his book because he is an artist not a youtuber he went on to hang out with the jack show and hang out and talk to you know with his friends but when he needs to work, he disappears to work. And I remember there's a point where he just popped out to say hi to people. And people are like, oh my gosh, where have you been? I've been around. I never left. Oh, well, what have you been doing? I've been living my life. You know, it's some people are on the internet so long, so much that they forget. You know, it's not all there is. Um, and... I, I respect Kelsey for that. I respect Graham when he when he said, "Look, I gotta stop streaming for a little bit and work on my book." The thing about these guys is they're not going to be forgotten, right? I know that the YouTube side gets mad because they're not being entertained, but these guys, you know, they're artists. They go off and they do their work, and then when people are happy to see them when they come back, Michael DJ says, "I've had rose-colored glasses on too long because of family history where artistic freedom was once a matter of life and death." I wanted to support what I wanted to be overlooked. Red flags was my mistake. And, uh, and that, you know, that's, I, I talked about this a little bit earlier too, just touched on it, but um, I, I see more and more people, you know, and I don't know if, if it's the, that's the most recent thing. The, uh, the confusion surrounding Shane and John and Ethan's cover thing, you know, where they're, they're doing these alternate covers They've already uh, got the table at C2E2 kind of, what do you call it, uh, reserved? Uh, the down payment's down because these are expensive tables. And they want to use these, these covers to, you know, like make things bigger. You know, invite other CG, you know, what did I hear? Anna, Mandy, Cecil. Um, invite them there and then maybe have some CG people sign up anybody that was at the maybe I'm, I'm guessing phil you know anybody that's at the thing come up and sign for an hour at this bigger more extravagant booth they want to kind of rub it in the uh, the mainstream's face or something i'm told that you know like make it something to have eyes on <clears throat> which for three years you know you're here and we don't need the mainstream screw the mainstream but then they don't stop talking about the mainstream it's like a it's like a ex-girlfriend sometimes just over and over again you know but anyway so they want to do this and they want to make a big thing now you've got some people that from what i understand again this is this is outside looking in stuff you've got some people that are saying that's not how it is uh they're just trying to get extra money for whatever and they're contesting that and uh this doesn't sound like a know like i mean i know there are, there are quite a few times there are f loud angry fans or anti-fans whatever you'd call them but this doesn't really sound like a a, a movement that's <laughs> that's growing uh gracefully and especially after three years you know uh so that's 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 cause for concern a little bit as a fan um as a creator, I I think it's 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 a little too unstable for me in terms of that. I'm I'm if I ever do a book, if I ever do a book, I'm gonna pay for it myself and just sell you know sell the small run. Um, but especially after the house repairs and stuff like that, I have no idea when that's ever gonna be. So, if ever, sometimes dreams die. You know you can't you can't really do a lot about that. Or you gotta, you know, move some things around to make them happen later. That's just how it is. Uh, but so you got, you got, you know, like like people kind of drawing sides and stuff on this this C two E two situation. Now the thing that I noticed on X was more people were starting to speak up about, you know, does this matter? Is this a good move? And more and more people are talking about it uh, in terms of. Uh, I guess 
trying to clean out some of the wounds that have been festering for the last couple of years, you know, um, which th there have been some, they've been unaddressed, you know, it's, it's sort of a, maybe if we ignore it, it'll go away, but a lot of it hasn't gone away. Uh, you know, could at first it was like, you know, maybe it's just a few people that aren't happy with their experience, but, um, no, it's there. There are there are things to be addressed. Um, and who knows? Who knows if they will? You know, there's a lot of people talking about a lot of stuff. Not just me. I would consider myself probably. I don't know what do you guys think. One of the lowest rungs. I don't think that I rate. In terms of channel size, opinion. You've got like people banding together. What do they call them? The CG slums. Uh, you got a bunch of these guys, all bigger channels than me, kind of getting together, talking about things a little more, um, not frivol frivolously, like loosely. They, I mean, they they really go in with their opinions. You've got the the bigger, the heavyweights, mid carters. Uh, kind of like to describe in boxing terms. Hopefully, that doesn't sound like you know, the little guys, the big guys. It's it's, I suppose, in terms of what kind of money they bring in. Um, I would probably consider myself way, way under all of these people in terms of opinion. Um, Michael DJ says they can't begin to, uh, begin to think of challenging the mainstream when they can't stop hacking on each other and concealing each, canceling each other. That's and that's I talked a little bit about that earlier. It's it's crabs in the bucket. You can't get united to take things on when when you know you're you're constantly fighting battles on all fronts. I think a lot of mainstream people have just kind of moved on every once in a while, you know, you'll, something will kick up, but so many of them just seem not to care anymore. <laughs> blocked. Everybody's blocked. Citizen Rona says people actually seem more excited about the prospect of the Las Vegas con. Is that right? You think so? Cause uh, I see a little bit of a mixed bag both times or both sides. Um, I mean, you know, it's like, well, if you're a wrestler, it's like Raw and SmackDown, isn't it? You know, you've got some some decent decent picks on both sides. So you can't really go wrong if you're a fan of the CG stuff. You can't really go wrong either way, right? But um, but I, I haven't really heard crazy opinions on on uh, either side, really. I think it's it's too new. But I I, I just keep on hearing all about you know, how much this person hates this person or this person's not allowed on this channel or da 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 da, da. That part bored me, to be honest. It's boring. Um, I'm not one of those people that is a huge soap opera fan. <laughs> you know, like, when I got older, I'll tell you what, this, this is going to be controversial maybe. When I got older, I started to prefer DC Comics uh, to Marvel. Because Marvel had a lot of soap opera type stuff. A lot of misunderstandings. Whenever the heroes fought each other, it's just a misunderstanding. Or, you know, whatever like that. Now, DC always had, like, these, you know, heroes fighting villains a lot of the time. And it was always, uh, like, interesting, I think, closer to X-File type stuff. You know? I know. Citizen Ronan, he is shocked. Um, but I think I preferred DC getting older marvel when i was younger dc getting now that doesn't mean i don't like the marvel characters i still do hulk's my favorite one of my favorite but uh getting older i mean the dc the, the batman detective stories this crazy sci-fi for superman and green lantern um the kind of police procedural type stuff you had with the flash uh back in the day um that that really did it for me and then the elseworlds when they did Elseworlds right, it was so friggin' cool. I thought it beat What If up one side and down the other. That was my jam, you know? Uh, and of course, you had like a lot of Darwin Cook's output went to DC too, and that that was that was it. But DC also kicked the crap out of Marvel with the uh, the genre stuff. You know, Jonah, Jonah Hex, Ghosts, House of Mystery, and, and Secrets, uh, Weird war tale stuff like that. Michael DJ says I was fired up about Vegas until I watched the aftermath math of Tampa. I get uh, comped in Vegas. Was thinking about uh, providing rooms to some fans on a tight budget. Now I wouldn't go near it. Yeah, 
Well, I'm not a traveler anyway, so don't worry about that. I, I, I wouldn't go to either one. But, um, get myself a drink. Given, um, given, uh, the, the fallout from Tampa. But hey, who knows? By the time it all happens, maybe everybody will be in like a neutral corner. You know, maybe, maybe this will, will kind of go away. I mean, remember when uh, they were talking all about Liam all the time, he was like the, he was like the thing to talk about. And then after a little while, the, it all kind of played itself out. Now, PTP just, you know, he stopped talking about them and they stopped talking about him eventually. Same with Mike Miller. We don't talk about Mike Miller much anymore either, you know, and it used to be like every video had, had some kind of a dig at him. Maybe it'll be, uh, you know, they'll be on to something new by then. Um, see, I just hope it's not a situation where, you know, depending on which con you go to, that's your, that's your team. That's your side. It's ridiculous. You know, it's, it, it, if it gets to that, I mean, I almost feel like, um, I just, I, I almost feel like more attention should be paid to the books. And a little, a little less, not not completely shutting them out. They're people too, but I mean a little less of what the creators are doing, because um, because it's 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 attention that that is is pulling away from the books, and it's almost encouraging these quote unquote storylines. You know, it's almost encouraging people to act out so that we can they're you know. Traffic can return to the channel once again. And it's not, I don't think it's intentional. I don't think they get in the back rooms and sit and say things like, you know, oh man, what if we beefed? <laughs> we could see so many sales and stuff like that. Because I mean, anybody that's really looking at the chat and reading the room, uh, the trouble is some chats love it, you know, and they will egg it on. You, you know, some people are going back and forth into different places and kind of like, hey, did you hear? Um, did you hear about what this guy said, you know, uh, and keeping things going sometimes for weeks. Right? Um, cause that's the fans have to have a standard too. I believe it. I'm somewhere in between a fan and the creator. And I mean, I think, I think that the creator shouldn't be like, you know, screw you, you'll take what I give you and like it. But the fans should not be, like, if you even step out of line, and I'm not going to tell anybody but to do. But, you know, you, you do your, what, what you're going to do. But, I mean, I think that there should be a personal standard. It can't be, if you're not perfect, my wallet is closed to you. Forgiveness is not a thing. And there's plenty of that out there. But you got to have sort of a symbio symbiosis. You know, you got to have creators meeting fans halfway for entertainment and for work and both of them getting something out of it because if you don't this is this is what you get you get like the warriors like you know hey come out and play and then they're all fighting each other look at eric july's situation everybody's going at him and he's responding to so much and <laughs> sister rona says ha bar ha. He, he, that dude responds to a lot of stuff a lot of stuff um and i you know in entertainment you got to choose your battles you have to you know you can't respond to every crappy thing someone says to you or you're going to have a long miserable day of, of of people just taking up your time because they can it's a power situation um i i i think that think that uh i just don't want to be in the orphans says ron says <laughs> but like i said it's not all bad there are comic shows out there that that do talk about comics whether it's like the chat or uh creative block or ali and rini discuss you know what they're doing you know like how they uh, narwhal going on and just writing out a story in front of people asking them what they think 
Um, there's a lot to like out there. I would not say that this whole thing is, you know, like falling apart. It's it's just you, you kind of have to. There's a lot of different tastes, but some of the stuff that really makes people angry is a lot louder. But we almost turn into like jailers in our own prison, right? You know, you sit and say, I can't take much more of this. I hate this crap. We almost don't go anywhere. Of course, there are quite a few people that are gone now, aren't there? Like that from the last couple of years. I know a few. I mean, like Peephole Circus shows up in this chat every once in a while, but he was a lot more active. And boy, boy oh boy, what a talent. And what a hilarious dude. He's one of my favorite people that I've met, um, especially CG UK. Uh, guys, a joy whenever he's whenever he's around. Um, but, you know, he's not here as much. I think he got a new job. He's just living life. A lot of people just decided that the fighting is not worth it. But there are still quite a few people holding out hope that the ship's going to right itself. I'm one of them. Because, um, I, I mean, I want, I want a lot of people to succeed. You know, I want to see Kelsey make a hundred thousand dollars on his campaign. I want to see him. I want to see Shank make a hundred thousand dollars. I want to see Rini get to book 10 or 12 or whatever and be doing at least two, 200 K per book. You know, I want to see Charlie's London release her third book and, uh, that make a lot of money. I want to see Ken Roca for it, get all the way to the, uh, to, uh, what book six or seven of, uh, of Groken, release that omnibus and make 500,000 easy, at least on that thing. I want to see, I want to see, uh, uh, 6 a.m. Comics release his book and make a ton of money off of that. His, uh, you know, Starfetch that he's been working on forever. You know, I, I want to see, uh, Lost Pages get into like, you know, like just almost like a showcase, creating new characters and new, you know, stuff and spinning those off and all of those doing really well for the Diaz uh, brothers. Uh, I, there is so much that I want to see. There's so much. I want to see uh, First Man and Kordrath both knock it out of the park for Andy. I want to see Aaron with all four of his, his properties just, you know, like really build that universe that he is it loves. I want to see Alterna Comics blow up. I want to see King Cryptid get to issue 100 and still be rocking it you know i i want to see I, heck i even want to see allegiance arts uh to write their ship and, and succeed because they had some great artists and some great stuff you know i i want to see uh i want to see battle brick road get to book four and still be doing great and eric looking for new stuff i want to see vaughn spin off a ton of different uh things and all of them doing okay monster md terror in the trenches uh t-bird and throttle i want to see that go ridiculously far i want to see um i want to see inglorious rex and starlight cats both be freaking powerhouses even be further than they are you know i want to see only death can save us continue on and do more i want to see a lot you know I want to see a lot from these people that I've, I've come to know. I want to see uh, uh, Woolies. His, he's got an anthology horror book coming out. And, and he's going to be shipping Ail Dark uh, pretty soon. I want to see those succeed. <sighs> My goodness. There's so much. And I know I'm I know I'm not even... I saw... Oh, um, uh, Michael DJ says, Rocafort is such a wizard. He just sails above all this nonsense. <laughs> he does. He doesn't... Like I said, he doesn't have a bad interaction and he just he does great books and he thanks fans for getting them. That's that's ideal. I love it. Uh, respect him to the moon and back. Okay, Comics says, by the way, Andy Smith just hit 100K and I'm... And despite the ghastly color of the Bud Root pages. <laughs> Citizen Rona says, that's why I'm still here. I'm hoping for some of these people uh, causing the nonsense will fade away. Uh, but yeah, Andy Smith hit... Um, let me just uh andy smith hit um 100k and i've been rooting for andy i think he is the last of the professionals to um you know to not hit that 100k i've been rooting for him to uh to make that and he finally has and i'm so happy he did he and dennis 
they deserve that that win. They worked so dang hard to get there. Uh, and and Citizen Ronin's kind of in the same boat, just hoping that the the stupid crap fades away and these 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 uh, people succeed. And you know what the problem is? Like I, I said, I I just listed a big list of stuff, and I know I'm not even scratching the surface. You know, I want to see uh, Allie. Right, you know, like a story that really gets people, you know, like like buzzing on her stuff. Like, there's so dang many people that I've met, uh, and I want to see, you know, Rob Geronimo. I want to see him get to an omnibus for Blood Realm. Just knock it right out of the park. There's so dang many people I've met here that I want to see do well, that they des they've earned doing well. They've overhauled their art. They've elevated their writing they're not in any drama which makes it harder to get noticed um but uh but they're all still cranking away they're all still working um and i'm proud to know them all of them oh yes dang it how could i forget horace h hoover i want to see that freaking book go to the moon um and, and Red Koi and all of those all of those um, alternative titles right now. I want to see those things all explode in popularity. Um, I want them all to have be in the same regard as like uh, Tinseltown, which is a great book. Uh, and uh, a lot of people liked, um, you know, uh, oh, was it Mr. Bones? All that stuff. Gosh dang it. I'm excited and a little bit depressed at the same time, you know, like I'm excited for all the comics that are coming, all the good people, the people that aren't fighting, making comics at the same time, you know, they're not getting, they're not getting to where they, they should be fast enough. So a little sad, you know, um, but they will get there. You know, you got, I, I think Frankie B. Washington, he's doing that. Kaijus and Cowboys book. They're on like book three or four over a Kickstarter. Doing great. Um, then you got Kelly Jones and uh, and uh, all the guy that did. Um, oh my gosh. Now I'm blanking. Um, Kelly Jones and. Uh, out here. Matt Wagner. Yeah, they're doing a Dracula series which looks kind of good. The first one's called uh, Impaler. Uh, that looks interesting. It's going to be on Kickstarter, mind you, but that's interesting. Hey, publishing Pete Sametti. Welcome to the nest. Consistency and sincerity is the key. I agree. It's a long path to things take time. Hopefully everyone, creators and readers, customers, will focus and zero in on what brings them joy. Life's too short. Well freaking said. And I think hopefully the fights, the backroom crap, releasing dms hopefully will get over this bump to where everybody's kind of got an un understanding <laughs> jim cox welcome to the nest why you people no hit the like they're just relaxing it's, it's cool they're just hanging out they're they're of 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 uh what would you call it a state of mind where they're just chilled and they're relaxed <laughs> they're just sitting around um but you know I, I think anybody that's been around here for more than a year or two understand that there's an ebb and a flow that there's there's like uh you're gonna expect some waves every once in a while from creators uh that and there are there are some you know that just you have to expect waves they, they should come with a weather advisory um not in like a weird blacklist kind of way, <laughs> mind you, but um, uh, it's no different in the mainstream. You know, you got you got artists and, and writers that are like friggin' typhoons. Is this Gomer? Oh, that could that could be. This is this jockey suggested by. So I'm I'm you know I'm playing it obviously very very uh, real, like um, literal, and then it is a jockey, horse jockey, mind you. And he is, he's slinging them discs <laughs> or records. Um, 
You know, speaking of which, we need... He's, he's up there like, Shazam, Shazam, Shazam. Michael TJ says, I think CG was a life raft for many fine creators fleeing a dying industry. Yep. But life on the raft has gotten weird. Maybe it needs to dock and the survivors go their own way. No, it's possible, I, I guess. Um, I, I, that's a tough one, you know. I think, you know, what we're seeing is um, we're seeing, you know, who is really cut out for this and who is going to learn that it's, it's, it's not worth the effort for them. It's not really in their blueprint to do this. Pete says, uh, I said a while ago, we're done rowing. We're on the shore. It's time to build. Put the oars down and start building a civilization. Right. I think some drank that seawater. They're sitting there staring and at the other ones thinking like, I like meat. And that's where the fights come from, right? They drank the seawater and they're looking just all crazy at the other guys on the raft. <laughs> like, oh, I'm just looking at some steaks right now. <laughs> I got to survive. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know what to expect, you know, from the, from the coming, uh, weeks here, but, um, coming years, I, I, I can't help but feel optimistic, you know, I don't know that the, the, <laughs> and some are only interested in raiding and pillaging. Yes, that comes from the madness. <laughs> well, that took a turn. <laughs> Jim Cox says, um, I can't say that the network is going to to uh, you know totally be as tight in say a year, two years time. There might not even be a network in a year, two years time. Somebody will come up with another hashtag, maybe that'll that'll really speak to people, and they'll all move towards that. Like so many are kind of moving towards this Iron Age thing. Like I said, I you usually name something when it's behind you, not so much when it's actually happening in front of you. For all we know. For all we know, this could be the aluminum age, right? It's thin. It's uh, it doesn't hold up to a lot. It's under pressure. It's recyclable, <laughs> and it's very, very commonly uh, tossed aside. We don't know what we're in right now, and I don't believe that the Iron Age. It sounds cool. It's marketing, but I don't know that this is actually the uh, what you'd call the Iron Age. Uh, Pete says people are getting ocean madness and constantly thinking of mutiny. Haha, <laughs> I believe it'll all shake out. It's true, it takes time. People are stressed out all around and it's playing out in different ways. Economy is part of it. Um, I think the algorithm shifts and constantly and stuff are part of it. Um, but I, like I said earlier, I think comics are taking they, they've taken a back seat so many times to everything else, and YouTube included. Uh, it, it really is time to put comics at the forefront. I know that many have said, people, we're not all here for comics. We're here for entertainment. I get that. I do. But, um, you know, it's got to be about comics at some point. You know, if, if, you, if you don't want to stay for that, I understand. I'm not going to say, you know, like you don't like comics. Get out. But, I mean, if, if it is a comic thing where we are uh, kind of focused on comics... It can't be like Warner Brothers and Disney just kind of using comics in the background. It's got to be like Marvel and DC when they were publishing houses and they were all about comics. To turn this around and make comics something people talk about again. Not the creators and what they're doing and how they're screwing each other over and, and releasing DMs and, and going to cons and fighting and, and, and beefing with people on there because one channel is more popular than the other. No, I mean about comic books. People talking about comic books again. And in order for that to happen, the books themselves actually have to be put first in front. Sometimes it's going to be a little less engaging, you know, like any stream. But I, I think that the path forward is a little slower and it's a little it's a little rockier. But in order to get people talking about books again. And, you know, so they talk to the people in their lives about books and they talk about, you know, with excitement the same way manga gets it and the same way if you go into like uh, a lot of places in europe france is, is one i keep on hearing about lots of comics there spain too 
lots of comics there. It's like a way of life. You know, beautiful hardcover uh, editions of these things take years to do, but they're event books when they come out. And uh, and manga just by sheer weight alone. Citizen Ronan says Pete's interview show has been a breath of fresh air with all the nightiness going on. I 100% agree, and I believe that was on my list of things that I was looking at when I took my week off. Pete's interview shows, Rini's shows. Uh, the, these things are, I think they help. I think they help uh, overall everything. These are not aggressive shows. There's no fights on them. A lot of laughing, a lot of just talking about stuff. Um, and that, that is more what we need. I, there was a creator, uh, he had said at one point, people are dying for new, for new, um, IPs. They're just dying for it. In all honesty, I don't agree with that. I think if people could, you know, go back to their old IPs written really well with new stories, they'd be happy to do that. Or even just buy reprints. It's up to you to convince them that this is something worth their time. And I honestly think fighting on stream isn't going to do that. You fight for a while, then you get a, you know, you get a video up saying, Hey, buy my comic book. I don't think that's the path forward for new people, for people that have been around and they know the lore and stuff like that or whatever. That's, that's one thing. But for, for, if I'm walking in and I'm, this is my first stream, you know, just like back in the day when they'd have that, that little, uh, paragraph up top telling you about the book and what it is because it's your first book picked up i think that the same thing should kind of be about streams you know like this is somebody's first stream and you're screaming at each other about you know what somebody said in the back room it's not gonna grow things okay comic says the indie comic scene may need a gym shooter but if they get one, they would stop buying indie. It's a con the indie comics have always been see without comic skate without that hashtag, it's just indie comics because people are all have always been kind of like temporarily alliance and uh, out in the wilderness by themselves, just hoping somebody will will take their you know their book and have a look at it. Sometimes people strike it big and, and a studio gets excited about it, um, but. Uh, let me see. Does that look better? No. Um, but. <laughs> oh. Michael DJ says Pete's interviews are entertaining and in informative. I agree. I get useful information and my blood pressure stays normal. And that's. That's. You know, it's his his stuff. Usually, you know, he used to play like jazz music with his. Interviews and stuff. And people would always remark on how relaxing that was to maybe have a draw stream where he's sketching cards or whatever and you'd have jazz music on and people would remark I, I was in the chats people would remark on how relaxing it was and his interviews are very much the same thing just a couple people sitting down and talking not screaming at each other there's no there's no fight there's no oh you like that book then screw you there's it's just people talking and i that's the sort of thing i think that keeps people around because it gives a lot of hope you know that that kind of thing will spread and I hope it does. I hope that spreads. I hope the Greybeards type stuff. Uh, jazz music has to be better feeling than or than feeding the ducks. You know, I never understood that. Let's look at that for a second. Feeding the ducks is this one. What does, does that actually say feeding the ducks to any of you? It's ridiculous. <laughs> but um but no i i think that you know you do get these shows that fly under the wire and eventually they get bigger but then sometimes what happens is they get bigger and they change the format and it just isn't the same show anymore you know, or the or the you know people get discouraged and they they quit when they had a good show um i've said it before like if you're not great at youtube and you're worried people are not watching my show. I got one, maybe two people watching, and one of them is me having YouTube open in the other in the other tab. That is your time to work out how you talk to people to to get talking. You know, like like to, and I'm doing a terrible job. Like to eliminate 
um, a lot of the stammering and the dead space and stuff like that. I get on a roll, I do okay, but sometimes when I'm caught in between thoughts, you know, you guys know me. It's a little, it's a little uh, road bump, speed bump. Sometimes you got to learn that when they have those comfortable silences, just pause and think a thought. Listen to this generic music. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this week has been very interesting, taking time off from streaming and just listening to different shows with the mindset of I'm new. I'm totally new at this. What is this? I'm looking for some good comic shows. I love comics, you know, like what is this sort of thing? And it was like a mixed bag. It was a 50 50. Uh, whether or not I would walk away and just play video games and find a new hobby or I would get into comics if I were a brand new person, you know, depend really depends on what channel you find first. <laughs> In this case, because uh, it's so easy to walk away and do different things in this world. So dang easy. Comics need all the help they can get. And fortunately, there are quite a few good shows that will give help. But then the louder, much bigger shows that arguably hurt are very, very prevalent. You know, and they have their they have their their uh, fan bases, so they're not going anywhere. Um, but I have noticed more people speaking up about, you know, like just the fighting and how it's, it's unnecessary. Um, you know, but what can you do? I mean, people have been fighting since the world started turning. You kind of have to accept it at this point. You can't really just hope things get better. You have to pick, pick and choose your favorites your world's what you make of it, right? Just like your your uh, your timeline is what you make of it. It is a stupid way to run business. I absolutely agree with you. Feeding the ducks is a metaphor, Jim Cox says, for doing something without needing to concentrate on it. I do believe. I've never heard that. That's new to me. That is new to me. But I guess that, that halfway makes sense. <laughs> um, but you're, I think... You know, Citizen Ronan, when he says it's a stupid way to run a business, um, I, I'm not inclined to disagree with you there. Um, I think, you know, obviously whenever you have a personal opinion, it's going to make some people angry. Um, but there is, you know, there's like acceptable risk, I think. In entertainment, it's, it's so easy to just go find something else. Um, so it's, you know, you take the appreciation where you can get it because people can be here one day and gone the next. I've been here three years within like CG, Alterna, CG adjacent, stuff like that. And there are so many people that have come and gone. It's staggering. You know, it's like working at a job with high hangover or ha high hangover. Isn't that so many of them? Uh, high turnover. And, you know, you look back and you realize, like, I must have worked with 300 people and I can't even remember half their names. But the people that 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 are still there, they're, you know, they're stronger, they're smarter, they're uh, maybe a little grizzled, you know, maybe less inclined to deal with horse crap. But uh, but they're experienced. Citizen Rona says I worked with a in a family business for over 30 years. If we ever ran our business like some of these guys do, we would have never have lasted. Well, some of them, you know, like, mind you, not all of them, but some of them have, like, some real low overhead. So they, that helps. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I, comics have always been a weird business. Always. It, it never has run like other businesses. It should, but it doesn't. You know, it's like an uh, investor comes in and they're like, uh, why aren't you doing it this way? This is how every other business does. It's like, well, it's just comics. <laughs> comics are uh, a world unto themselves you know you, you it's not quite like books uh because there's uh there's other components involved in it and uh the fans are not like any other fans seems like they might be but they aren't uh michael it's like you know it's like the punisher movie right <clears throat> they've all failed every one of them and 
I would argue that the the miniseries, the Marvel miniseries that everybody loves, was way off base because you know it it was three episodes of awesome Punisher stuff, and the other six episodes or whatever it was, or six or eight episodes was him sitting around brooding and just being sad. But no Punisher movie has ever really gotten it right because there's so dang many versions of the Punisher. You know, you got like Garth Ennis, the white glove Punisher, like Chuck Dixon style, John Romita Jr., the original one. Um, they've all got bits and pieces, right? Because they ripped them from the comics, but never ever had it right. The Dolph Lundgren one. Michael DJ says, I heard one individual say he has big silent international backers, so maybe normal business considerations don't affect him. That's possible. Uh, Citizen Rona says, well, I was uh, talking more about how they treat customers in there. At oh, <clears throat> Get you, yeah. Um, with the mainstream and how you know they their checks are paid by giant corporations, they don't care. And by the uh, the little guys here who, compared to the mainstream, mind you, uh, you know it's. I think some of it is is fans that have a hard time converting to business people. As fans, they can say absolutely whatever they want. As business people, they got to choose their battles, right? And many times they do not do well with that. They don't choose their battles correctly and it ends up burying them. And they cannot understand why, because they were the exact same as they were as a fan. Uh, you have to switch your switch up your strategies and behaviors when you start providing services. That's what comics are at the end of the day. It's a creative industry, but it's a service industry. You're serving people. You're, you're making them stories. It's not unlike any other kind of creative, like shoemaker. You know, you're making somebody a shoe, or a uh, a marketing guy. You're you're trying to sell somebody stuff for them. In that way, it is a service industry where you are trying to please someone so they'll buy your stuff. Um, and you know, it's long and short of it. Many many times, Citizen Rona says, you have to suck it up in business and look at the long view. Right. Right. Like I said, choose your battles. And most of them aren't worth it. A lot of these people that, that don't respond to a whole lot, eventually it just goes away. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it escalates. But more often than not, the little stuff it just goes away. Um, but I think, dang, we're two hours. This might be my longest stream ever. Michael T.C. says, yep, business side is a separate skill. Not everyone has it. No, especially artists. Um, artists have to work, I think, extra hard because it used to be just do your do your work and turn it in. Now it's you got to learn a lot of other skills, uh, and it's 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 not something that everybody can do. I'm probably I might just be in that that camp. I'm not I'm not the best at business. I can learn it, but I mean, like I, I draw. That's what I do, and I that's I still have some things to learn. A long way to go for me, but um, yeah, I think you know what we're probably going to wrap it up pretty soon here because holy cow is it? it's it's almost midnight for me but hey i've had a great time talking with you guys oh shoot and i'm happy to be back it was a grand experiment <laughs> oh, you know what i need Yeah, good enough. Um, so, disc jockey, literal jockey, discs. <laughs> Great stream stats. This is it, Riddison Sonnen. Thank you very much. Uh, I was always wondering you, you, when you go away for a while, you're like, are you, am I rusty? No, nah, I didn't do too bad. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what things turn up in the future here. The more people speak up, the more people start, you know, changing away from the, the chaotic fights, really listening to the readers and the readers, you know, really responding well to the stuff that they like and really propping that up and talking about it. Because that's something I think we're missing a little bit, too, is the uh, the readers talking about the work more. Ethan is right about that. You know, like like there should be more people talking. I don't necessarily know if you ne need reviews but i mean like roca fort is broken i've seen a lot of people talk about that 
Um, what's uh, King Cryptid? I've seen a lot of people talk about King Cryptid, and I think the next, the next, when the next one comes out, the next four or five, you know, you're going to start really getting people discussing things about that world. And uh, and and well, shoot, um, Groken's so cryptic. You know, they're all they're all theories. A lot of people are doing the oh. Okay, comic says. By the way, happy 100th. I love being in these streams. It's like being a supporting character in Cheers. Thank you. It wasn't exactly the biggest, most extravagant. I guess a double episode, but I'm, I'm, I guess I, I came in thinking like, ah, it's not. It's not something I need to toot too loudly. Toot toot. Um. So, but thank you guys. You made it. You made it special. There were a lot of people that, that sat and listened. I think I was actually up to 10 people watching it's at least that's what it says there could have been more lurkers that weren't really talking those tend to uh, fall off but that that was that meant a lot i'm i'm actually breaking records here myself um with you guys with your help thank you thank you so much let me just <laughs> it's a good night it's a good night. It was a good night. Uh, so my instead of Ronnie, you can be Norm, sure. Uh, Henry Beavis, welcome to the nest. Now toward the, almost the end here. I was just gonna lurk, but I had to chime in and say this has been an enjoyable stream. Good topics. Cheers. Thank you. I'm glad. I I was wondering. I'm going into this thinking like I talked to some people saying I wanted to do this. I wanted to just sit and talk about what I've been seeing in in a not a not an aggressive mean way, just more of an analytical looking in way. And how would that go? And uh, I'm glad it went okay. I'm glad I didn't ruffle any feathers, at least of all my own, um, talking about what I see. And uh, hopefully we see a, hopefully I'm, th I'm crossing these fingers. Hopefully we see a, a real uptick in, in positive, not necessarily positive, realistic stuff. You know, I, it's one thing I know nobody really likes the whole like everybody's fighting. So we're going to do a positive stream to keep our minds off of it. Because then you call it out and everyone's like, well, this is hokey. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will see you guys when I see you next. Thank you very much for uh, coming out. And to you all on replay, thank you for making it this far if you have. Uh and I will probably be on tomorrow, I think. Probably more in the daytime a little bit. Uh, oh, Henry Bean says, I think a lot of people are like oh, like mine. Well, that's, that's good to know that I'm not alone in this. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably be streaming sometime in the afternoon tomorrow. Say hello to some of those people if you guys are around. I always love to have you. But uh, until then, I'll see you when I see you next. <laughs>